Hey, good morning. I'm Councillor Glenn. It is Saturday, March the 2nd. It is hard to believe it's already March, but here we are. Uh, this morning I'm in the brand new Bradley Commons neighborhood next to the Stormwater Pond. Uh, this is a brand new neighborhood. There is, is, there's one row of houses that is occupied. Looks like there's a few more getting very, very close to welcoming brand new neighbors, but it's very much under construction. Um, this is a nice stormwater pond here, a, a pathway if you want to come check it out. Uh, the, it's in the southeast part of the neighborhood and access is from Mantra Street, which is the road that connects to Hazeldean Road near all the big box stores. Uh, later on the spring, and hopefully as soon as possible, the builder is going to be opening up the pedestrian bridge over the creek into uh, Abbotsville Crossing to the Bald Cypress Street there. Um, and that'll be a great pedestrian connection. It means for Abbotsville Crossing, they'll have a, a walking route to get to Hazeldean Road and the shops there and the Route 61 bus and so on. So that's great news. Um, anyways, very much under construction, but uh, if you're looking for some place to come and, and uh, go for a walk, uh, explore a little bit, here we are, Bradley Commons off of Mantra Street. Okay, let's get started. First of all, Joyeux Mois de la Francophonie. Uh, nous célébrons la langue française et la francophonie tout au cours du mois de mars. Uh, il y a beaucoup qui arrivent partout dans la ville, alors pour nos uh, résidents francophones, on souhaite une, un bon mois de la francophonie. Um, looking at, uh, across over my shoulder here at the uh, something in the water, can you see that? It's like a sheet of drywall or insulation or something. And, you can't quite see it, maybe you can. Um, further in the pond, there's a, a blue recycling bin at the side of the pond. Um, a lot of debris flying around after that crazy windstorm we had on Wednesday evening that caused a big hydro outage. So 10,000 people without power. I don't know the exact cause yet. I think it's safe to assume. <clears throat> safe to assume, excuse me, it's uh, wind related. Uh, but I, I've had a few questions whenever we have a big storm or a power outage about uh, what Hydro Ottawa is doing to improve their resiliency. And uh, I am working on a, a post I'm going to put up on my website uh, maybe before the end of the weekend, maybe earlier this week, just about some of the investments Hydro Ottawa is making because, yes, we are getting more extreme weather. And, yes, it is going to have an impact on our power grid. So there, and, and, yes, there are improvements being made. So I'll share that later this weekend. Um, I want to say some congrats. First of all, congrats to the Stittsville Kiwanis Club for the opening of the Youth Drop-In Center on Thursday evening at Frederick Banting High School. Um, it's going to be open every week now, every Tuesday and Thursday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's free and open to any high school student in our community. So if you know a high school student, maybe a family member, a friend or a neighbor, please let them know. There's lots of activities there, games, movies, um, ping pong tables, a quiet study area if you need that. There's uh, lots of stuff going on there. And uh, yeah, uh, congratulations to the Kiwanis Club. It's great to see that. Uh, congrats to Mandy and Caitlin, who are the new president and vice president of the Stittsville Village Association. I was able to drop by to their annual general meeting on Wednesday and they had a great turnout. So thanks to everybody for showing up and uh, getting involved in the community. And congrats to the skaters from the Goulburn Skating Club who are at the Nationals in Windsor. The Starlight Intermediate Synchro Team uh, came away with first place at the Nationals. So that's, uh, that's amazing. Congratulations. Um, one more, I guess, congrats or announcement. Coming in May, every Saturday morning, Stittsville is going to be hosting a park run. So there's a number of volunteers in our community who have, uh, who have organized this, put this together. It's going to be a five kilometer run. It's free every Saturday morning, uh, starting um, near Abbott and Shea, and then running uh, down the Trans Canada Trail and up along Robert Grant Avenue. Um, if you search for Park Run Stittsville, I imagine you'll come up with some information. Um, and I'll, I'll be sharing some more on my newsletter this week, but uh, that'll be a great weekly event coming to Stittsville soon. I know we have a lot of runners in our community, so congrats to the uh, volunteers who have put that together. Uh, turning to some city updates, we had a big update this week at our LRT subcommittee, Light Rail subcommittee meeting about when the south, east, and west lines will open. So the south end, which goes from Bayview Station 
to Carleton University and to the airport and also to Riverside South. Um, that opening is going to be sometime between June and September. Now, obviously, we hope it'll happen sooner than later. Uh, if you're a Carleton University student, for example, I know it's been a uh, very difficult uh, transition time without the train and having, having buses running instead. Anyways, we'd like it to happen as soon as possible, but obviously it needs to be ready to go um, safely and all of the trial and testing needs to happen appropriately. And that's why there's that window of time, sometime between June and September. Uh, and it really depends on how well or how poorly the testing goes. So we're gonna be watching that closely and, and sharing updates there. Into the East End, where it would extend from Blair Road to Trim Road, um, that opening looks like it'll be towards the end of 2025 or early 2026. Uh, there's some positive news in the last week. They've started testing trains along the track for the first time this week, so that's good. In the West End, where that train is being extended from Tunney's Pasture to Algonquin College and Tunney's Pasture out to Moody, past Bayshore, uh, it's, it'll be about a year after the East, so the end of 2026 or the beginning of 2027. Uh, so that'll be a big improvement for residents here in the West End. Uh, you can find more information about that uh, in local media and on the city's website. A reminder, the March 21st is the deadline to file your interim property tax payment and to make your vacant unit tax declaration. And you can find more information at ottawa.ca. Uh, there's a couple consultations going on right now. One is um, the city is updating policy for private snowplows. So uh, you need to be licensed in order to get, um, uh, in order to run a private snowplow operation. So uh, the Kodiaks and the Adam Kittles and the, uh, uh, anyway, all, all of those types of private snowplows. The city's updating the policy and the bylaw and the rules around that. Uh, so check out engage.ottawa.ca for more information. And um, uh, also, while you're there, check out the draft waste plan. So this is how Ottawa is going to deal with waste for the next 25 years. Uh, you can fill out a survey there. And it's things like uh, incinerations and landfills and curbside pickup and um, other ways that we can do better at recycling and, and diverting things away from the landfill. And there's 50 actions that you can review and share your feedback on. So do check that out. Uh, locally, 6310 Hazel Dean, uh, we've shared a massive document with, uh, uh, it's a Q&A document with all the questions we received during that public meeting a week and a half ago. Uh, we've put all the questions and answers in one document. I've also shared a document about what's next and what residents can do on this particular file. So uh, if you're following 6310 Hazel Dean Road, please check that out. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is um, I, I think I appreciate a lot of frustration is because of kind of the lopsidedness of the information we have so far. So at that public meeting a week and a half ago, or even in the, the city's dev apps, development applications website, um, we just have the planning rationale from the developer. So they've submitted their own studies. They've submitted their, it's called a planning rationale. It's a document that outlines why they believe their development meets all of the zoning bylaw uh, or, or city plan policies, provincial policies, and so on. Um, but it hasn't yet been evaluated by city staff, so it's a very lopsided view. Um, that analysis from city staff will be coming in the coming months. It takes a lot of time to do, and they'll be bringing that analysis to our planning and housing committee. I'm going to guess sometime this fall, but could be a bit earlier, could be a bit later. Um, and, and that'll give us sort of the other side of it too. So uh, uh, an analysis from city staff. In the meantime, there will be a lot of back and forth that happens between the developer and city staff. This is typical for a, a large or complex project. Uh, what is originally submitted is rarely the final version and uh, there's a lot of back and forth and, and that's already actually started at the, the staff level. Um, volunteer awards, a reminder that the nomination period continues. Uh, if you know a great volunteer in our community, please check out glengower.ca slash volunteer and submit a nomination. I want to remind folks about uh, speeding and the importance of slowing down in residential neighborhoods. Uh, now that the snow is largely gone, um, it widens the roads 
and it won't be until April that we start reinstalling flex stakes and, and other traffic calming measures. We see this every year between when snow goes and when those flex stakes go in, uh, we usually get uh, just a flurry of speeding complaints. So please slow down. If you're going above 40 in a residential neighborhood, you do not have the time to stop. If a, if a child or a pet would run out or if, if anything unexpected happens, um, if you're going above 40, you do not have the braking time, the reaction time to stop. So please slow down to keep your neighborhood safe. And if you're a resident and you have a continuing issue of speeding on your street, you can report unsafe driving behavior to ottawapolice.ca slash report, and that will help them focus their efforts as well. And the last thing, uh, 311 is the number to call if you've got uh, concerns or if you notice something in the community, maybe some graffiti or a pothole, um, uh, damage to a local park, uh, all sorts of things, any city issue, please call 311. Uh, their call center is open 24 seven and they're the quickest way to get attention to issues that you might see. And thank you for being our, our eyes and ears out in the community. Okay, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching or for listening. Um, have a great weekend. I hope you get out to explore your community, maybe here in Bradley Commons, or maybe somewhere else with the stormwater pond. We'll see. Uh, I'll see you here next week. Take care.